What's up, Scrappy peeps? It's Del from Inky Quill, and today I am scrapping a 9x12 layout, and I'm using some of the goodies from Flutter by Design's We Run the World collection. I've got, I recently bought the paper pad, and I am a little obsessed with it, and I just thought the colours were perfect for this photo of Archie and his great nan, which is Aaron's nan. Uh, they're both wearing kind of well she's wearing a kind of pinky purpley toned uh, cardigan and she, Archie is actually wearing a red knitted cardigan that she knitted for him and so I thought that some of the papers as soon as I saw that paper I was like yep sold I was actually going to do a different thing where I was doing strips of paper but then as soon as I saw this one I was like yep change of plans we're going this way now if you can hear the rain in the background, it's just started pouring rain, which is typical for voiceover time, but we're going to make it work anyway. I also grabbed a stamp set from my stash um, from Alt, is it Alta New? Alta New, I think that's how you say it. And I just stamped a bunch of them out and fussy cut them. Uh, this stamp is in my Brisbane Expo haul. If you want more details of where I got it from and what the stamp set is called, you can watch that video and find the details in there. And I, because this background paper was so beautiful, I didn't really need to do a lot to this page. So I'm matting both of my photos, which are three by four size, and I'm just matting them on a spare piece of uh, polka dot tissue paper that I just had lying around. And I'm doing that because I want it, because the photos themselves are quite similar colors to the background. I felt like they needed a, they needed a border of something so that they, stood out from the background and they didn't blend in completely. I want it to coordinate but not blend in and get lost. So I'm just trimming those down and I also decided to add the doily to put them on because Nana's remind me of doily. Well, Aaron's Nan reminds me of doilies. No, that's not the right way to say it. Doilies remind me of Aaron's Nan. There we go. Get your words right, Adele. And so I knew I wanted to include one of them on the layout as well. And so I'm just sticking that down with some double sized sticky tape because my ATG tape gun does not like tissue paper and doilies. I'm using some more to stick that down. And then I'm going to just stick all the flowers down just as they are. I could have colored them. I could have inked them up. I could have watercolored them. I could have painted them, missed them, colored, penciled them, whatever. But I just wanted to keep them white and I did that because of the color that's in this background paper I'm just obsessed with. I think I'm gonna to have to buy another one of these paper packs because you get one of each paper and I've pretty much used this whole sheet now because it's a nine by 12 layout. I'm also attaching another one of my fave papers which is this floral piece to the background and I'm cheating because I like it so much and I've cut it in half so that it looks like there's an entire piece behind the photos but really there's not so that's a little sneaky thing you can do if you ever um, either have only a scrap of a piece of paper that you like or you just don't want to waste a whole piece of paper I also added some of that blue behind there just to really make this um, this photo matte pop and now it's time to stick them down and I was wondering should I put the photos under oh, sorry the flowers should I put the flowers under the photo or should I go with my initial plan and put them down the side and I thought I thought for a short moment of doing some misting in the background but in the end I decide not to so that's why I gessoed this part here and I kind of just liked the tiny touch of white gesso peeking out from behind the flowers because it it helped give another layer to this page and also it made the because the flowers are so contrasting to the colors of this background paper the white brush strokes kind of it kind of acts as a bit of a barrier I guess and doesn't make them look so contrasted I hope that makes sense in my brain it makes sense but it might not make sense the way it's coming out of my mouth so I'm sticking them down and I just still 
can't stop staring at this. The colours just go so well with these photos. Um, when I was figuring out what to use with this, these photos, I'd held, I'd held on to them for a while because these are from last year and uh, they're some of the last photos that I have of that. So this was Father's Day September and I think I only have a couple of pages to do from September to December and I've been waiting to find something that matched it perfectly because it is a special photo. It's the first photo we have of um, Archie and his great nan together and so I knew that I wanted to do something a little bit special for them. So I'm just sticking those down and I'm trying to just kind of make a combination between big ones and little ones and then I have some leaves that I'm going to stick in and in a moment as well and for for this layout it's a lot of people ask if I do double page layouts and I generally don't but I kind of do at the same time I don't scrap them at the same time but um, I am in the I've half filmed a video on my project life process just in general and in it I talk about how um, uh, an important step for me is printing all my photos off in like a bulk lot and then sticking them in my page protectors ready to go way before I even get up to scrapping them. And so when I'm flicking through my album to find something to scrap, I know what's on the next page and I can kind of work out on when I do the project life page that's next to this uh, layout, I can go and kind of go, oh, okay, I use pink tones here, which in all honesty, I use pink tones all the time. Uh, so I can go, I'll make sure that I'll use some pink in this project life page so that they, they look like they belong together. So I don't necessarily make double page layouts, but I kind of do, if, if that makes sense. So I'm just going through the sticky quotes sticker sheet and I decided to go with that smile because it's just so pretty. And in the end, I actually do outline it with a black pen because it's not popping enough for me I like my things to pop you know I love to do a doodly border and anything to kind of make the elements on my page stand out and to to make them not blend in too much to the background so I'm just going through and I'm adding some stickers from this Flutterby Designs We Run the World sticker sheet and some punched hearts that I had punched out from a previous project um, from some of the papers also from this collection and then I'm adding some tiny little letters from the sticky alpha sheet from Flutterby Designs 2 and I'm just putting I'm almost out I'm out of T's now I'm no more T's T's seem to be the first letter that I always go through what is the first letter that you always seem to run out of when you are using alphabets for me it's T's and Y's I don't know what I must I must just write like happy or bunny a lot I seem to go through my Y's very very quickly I'm punching out some of the wood veneer hearts from this same We Run The World collection and I'm adding them in because I felt like there was a lot of paper going on in this page, a lot of flat papery layers and it just, it needed a different texture, it needed something that was a little bit 3D and just to, to break everything up a little bit. Um, I kind of get a bit, I think it's like paper claustrophobic when things are all too papery I need something in there I need some either some glittery chunky texture or some wood veneer texture I need something other than the paperiness I'm also adding some tiny uh, little word stickers also from Flutterby Designs and then I felt like the whole thing needed a doodly border. Um, I've been using my Pilot G7 pen, I think it is. I found it in my pen box and it works quite nice. So that's why I'm using it. I must have bought it a while ago. Um, but it's, I think it's a gel pen. I think that's what it is. And so it uh, writes really nice and smoothly on this paper. So I'm just going through doing the doodly border before I do any Heidi shining. I've learnt that. It took me a while to learn that. It should have taken me not that long to learn that. But uh, for beginners of Heidi shining or splattering on your layouts, 
definitely leave that to the last step. Definitely don't try to journal after you've highly shined on your page because it's difficult and you will stuff up your pens as I have done many times before. I'm adding a couple of little glitter hearts just from my stash. I keep this little bowl on my um, desk nice and handy and that's it i did some journaling about this elsewhere uh, so i didn't really need to journal on this particular layout because i've already written about it on a page that wasn't too far from here and i i really feel like the the heidi shine against the mixed media -y, uh feel of the background paper really it just finished it off it was just what i needed so thank you for watching this video today if you want any info about flutter by designs i'll pop the link in the description below um but it was oh we're a little bit we're overhanging there needed to snip that off it was a fun layout to make and it's just full of elements that remind me of Aaron's lovely nan and I just wanted to put them all in to make a layout to remember this moment. Thanks for watching today. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you next time. Bye!